Hello class, welcome to day 3b. This is chapter 15 and it's um, the gastrointestinal system or digestive system. Um, Mary Lambert of Nursing requires the uh, nursing program to include instruction on body systems and how the body works so that way we understand how to take care of the residents and all of the changes that affect the residents, the elderly, as they get older, um, different, how it affects different systems. So this system, gastrointestinal system, some key terms here. Biology just means the study of all living things. Anatomy, study of body structure, physiology, study of how the body parts function together. Cells, you know, structural, basic structural units of all um, living organisms, tissues, group of cells that perform similar tasks in the body, organ, structural unit in the body that performs specific function like the brain, the heart, the um, kidney, those are all organs. Body systems, group of organs that perform specific functions in the human body. Homeostasis means the condition in which all the body systems are balanced, they're functioning at a balanced pace. Pathophysiology, study of disorders in the body. So these are the um, systems that we're going to be studying throughout the program. And uh, the first one, uh, GI system, gastrointestinal system or digestive system. We're going to study urinary system. We're not going to study reproduction because <laughs> Since uh, the focus of the program is in long-term care, um, the elderly, they don't reproduce after a certain age. Um, so the skin, the integumentary system, circulatory system, respiratory system, musculoskeletal system, nervous system, endocrine, and the immune system. So again, we talked about homeostasis, a condition in which the body systems are balanced and working at their best. Um, for example, um, when the body temperature is, well, 98.6 is the ideal body temperature. That's when you know that the temperature of the body is at a state of homeostasis when the temperature is 98.6. Again, knowing normal changes in the, in, uh, um, that affects the elderly, also help helps us to know how to uh, provide care for them. So we have the GI tract. So the GI system here um, is a continuous tube that starts from the mouth um, through the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine, all the way to the anus. Okay. Peristalsis, this is your muscular contractions that push food through um, the stomach. As you swallow food, um, it, it, it moves in a peristals, peristaltic movement as it goes down into the stomach. Chyme is semi-liquid substance uh, that helps to break down the food uh, in the stomach. Duodenum, this is the first part of your small intestine after the stomach that you know along that track as the food goes along. Absor absorption means that um, the, the food you eat is then it's digested and then the nutrients are transferred uh, into the cells that's what the body uses for energy. Then whatever is left that the body don't need becomes solid waste. And, ex and then excreted through the anus, uh, which is called feces, or stool, or a bowel movement. Um, you know, they call it number two here. Uh, number one is urine, number two is uh, bowel movement, feces. So your resident might say, oh nurse, I need to do number two. Just know that they need to have a bowel movement. Electrolytes are chemical substances that are essential to maintaining uh, fluid balance and homeostasis in the body. The colon is the large intestine which um, 
connect from the small intestine and the small intestines connect from the stomach. Defecation just means the process of eliminating feces from the rectum through the anus. Ingestion is the process of taking in food or fluid into the body. Digestion, the process of converting food so that it can be absorbed into uh, nutrients for the body tissues to use. Elimination, the process of expelling waste, whether it's urine or feces. So here's your diagram of the GI system. You see the mouth, uh, where the food goes in there. Then inside the mouth, there's salivary gland that will secrete saliva. The tongue uh, will help, you know, move the food, roll it, <coughs> and, you know, after chewing, then it will go down the uh, throat, through the esophagus, into the stomach, the liver, and the gallbladder, and the pancreas, they all will, you know, play a role in the digestive process. Then, um, once the nutrients have been absorbed, um, the waste then pass down through the small intestine into the large intestine and then come out as feces through the anus. Okay, so important points to know about GI system. Again, digest, digestion prepares food for absorption into the cell and elimination is expelling solid waste. Function of the, of the uh, gastrointestinal system. Oh, by the way, if you hear me keep saying GI, GI, um, that's what it's called, um, popularly called gastro is the G, intestinal is the I, so GI system, GI system. Um, digestion of food, digestion of, uh, sorry, ingestion of food, digestion of food, absorption of nutrients, elimination of waste. So, normal changes in the aging, as people get older, the ability to taste food decreases. So that's why they, they have poor appetite, because they can't taste the food as much anymore. Um, the process of digestion takes longer and less efficient. The body waste moves more slowly. Uh, difficulty chewing and swallowing may occur. Absorption of vitamins and minerals decreases. Production of saliva decreases. So as people get older, all these functions decreases. And that causes them to lose weight and not uh, be well nourished. Bowel elimination is a process of releasing or emptying the colon or large intestine of solid waste, which is called bowel movement. So points to know about bowel elimination. Now, we talked about the fact that as a caregiver, uh, as as one of the caregivers that is that works closest with the resident, you have to be observing for for things that are not normal. So in order to know what's not normal, you have to know what is normal. So for example, here, you know. Um, what does normal stool supposed to look like? Well, stool is supposed to be brown, soft, moist, and formed. There should be no pain when um, having a bowel movement. There should be no blood in it, no pus, no, muc no mucus, no worms. Okay. So, if you see these signs and sy symptoms in the stool, you must report to the charge nurse. There's blood in the stool or any kind of abnormal color. Sometimes it's very black. It could be because of vacation that they're taking or it could be they're having internal bleeding. But if you're not sure, just call the charge nurse and report. The stool is hard and dry. There's diarrhea, which is, you know, frequent, loose stool. There's constipation, meaning they have not gone to the bathroom. For, um, they have not had a bowel movement in days. Or they're having pain when they're having a bowel movement or there's blood, pulse, mucus or discharge in the stool. Or it's the first time they, they're having incontinence. Incontinence means the inability to control um, the bowel or bladder. Fractured pan. 
Um, if you look around um, in Susie's room, you will see a bed pan and you will see a portable commode. Well, but a fractured pan is slightly different from the normal bed pan that you will see in Susie's room. Um, so this is the kind of bed pan that is flatter. Um, it doesn't have the wings that the regular bed pan has. This is ideal for people who just had a fracture or just had a hip replacement surgery. Um, it's smaller and much better for them to use a fractured pan than a regular bed pan. Portable commode just means your toilet on wheels. Um, where well, let's go back to a bed pan for a second. So who would be an ideal candidate to use a bed pan? This is somebody who just had a surgery and, and the doctor has said that they cannot, they must be on bed rest and they cannot come out of bed maybe for three days. Well, how will they be doing number one and number two? They're going to have to use a bedpan if they are continent. If they are incontinent, it doesn't matter, they're going to go in their diaper in the bed and then they, they get cleaned up and changed. But if they are continent, they're going to request a bedpan or a urinal while they're in bed so they can do their business in there. Then a portable commode is like a toilet on wheels that is by the bedside. So this would be ideal for a resident. For example, the resident who was using the bedside commode, uh, the doctor has said the first three days stay in bed, don't come out. Maybe after that, you can take a few steps, but not too far. So if this person can take a few steps, but cannot go all the way to the bathroom, then the portable commode will be better for them because they can get up, take one or two steps and sit on the commode, do their business, take one or two steps and get back in bed. So you might get a question that says, which of the following candidates should use a bedside commode or which of the following candidate or residents should use a fractured pan? Factors that affect bowel elimination, growth and development, um, psychological factors, diet, fluid intake, physical activity, personal habits and medication. So growth and development may affect bowel elimination. Some people, you know, depending on the kind of uh, diagnosis they have or sickness they have, it might be it may be difficult for them to uh, eliminate um, their bowel normally. To promote normal elimination, they encourage fluid and nutritious meals. There are some you know some meals that makes it difficult to uh, have a normal bowel movement, like starchy food and so on. Encourage exercise and activity as much as possible if it is allowed. So can you think of a psychological factor that could affect bowel elimination? Well for some people, if there are people standing around, they're not going to be able to use the bathroom, you know. Um, so if you take a resident to the bathroom, you sit them on the toilet and you're standing there to watch because you know you don't want them to fall, well that might prevent them from going because you're standing there. So you need to know your resident and maybe step out the door a little bit and let them have some privacy to do their business. Having a roommate for the first time might be a psychological factor. Anxiety, stress or fear or anger, depression can cause that. So always provide privacy for your resident. Diets can also affect elimination. We talked about um, you know diets um, that are high in animal fat, are low in fiber, beans, uh, those can cause, um, um, can affect normal bio elimination. So nursing assistant, assistant should encourage nutritious meals like we spoke of earlier. Fluid intake can affect bio elimination. If you're not drinking enough water, then the body doesn't have enough fluid to process the um, the waste so that it can come out uh, normally. Again, encourage 
fluid intake as much as possible. Um, so generally, a healthy person needs to drink 64 ounces of fluid a day. That's about um, eight, uh, eight, eight cups of water uh, in a day. Physical activity and exercises also affects bowel elimination. If you're idle and you're not moving much, then um, your bowels will not move regularly. So exercises helps with so many aspects of uh, uh, life. Again, promote normal elimination, um, encouraging daily ac activities as well. Personal habits can also affect bowel elimination. There are some people that only go certain times of the day. Some people cannot go in a public toilet. Um, one time I was um, traveling to Atlanta uh, by road. I needed to go so bad. And um, I stopped at this gas station. They were charging um, like $5 or $2 or so for you to go use their bathroom paid the five dollars they gave me a key I, when I went and opened the door the site the place was in such a mess that the site alone sent some kind of message to my brain that told the the told the bladder and the uh, what do you call it the the large intestine to hold hold put everything on hold all of a sudden I didn't feel like going anymore everything just seized i was i was fine you know i, I had i drive until the next near the until the nearest um rest area before i could use the, a decent bathroom so sometimes um you know i guess that's part of psychological um uh, that uh, uh, factor that could affect bowel elimination but um so read through that Sometimes medications may affect bowel elimination. Antibiotics causes diarrhea, or cause, um, some pain relievers cause causes uh, constipation. Again, promote normal elimination. Um, sometimes laxatives may need to be used. Um, we talked about enema. So enema is a laxative that's given in most facilities. The charge nurses give the enema. But the nursing assistants are allowed, I mean, uh, are taught how to use enema. This is a urinal for men. Uh, it's like a little long cup um, where you give it to the residents and then they pee in it. And then some of them, they will hang it on the bedside rail or just leave it on top of the bedside table. And then you have to empty it for them and rinse it and put it back so they can use it again. Heartburn, um, you know, this is when uh, the weakening of the sphincter muscle, it's not like you eat something but it seems like it just stayed in your chest or it's trying to come back out. That's called acid reflux. Same thing here, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. That's when something that you've eaten tries to come back out. So we're going to um, gallbladder is again it's a disorder of the gallstone uh, pancreatic disorders and tumors um, cirrhosis of the liver hernia read through all of those constipation we spoke about that earlier inability to eliminate stool frequently enema um, specific amount of water with some additive in this that helps stimulate uh, bowel elimination Suppository is another kind of laxative that's given in the rectum to cause bowel movement. Um, points to know about constipation. Constipation is the inability to eliminate stool. Um, what causes constipation? Changes in aging, poor appetite, lack of exercise, and so on. Diarrhea is a frequent loose stool. It is the frequent elimination of liquid or semi-liquid feces and so on. Sometimes it's caused by infection or microorganism or some types of medication and so on. 
Fecal incontinence means inability to control the muscles of the um, bowel um, that causes people to you know have a bowel movement on themselves. Fecal impaction this is when there's a hard stool in that large intestine that is not coming out um, very difficult uh, sometimes you've tried everything and it's not coming out then a process called disimpaction will be used to try to um, help residents um, you know expel the feces um, write this down and ask one of your instructors to explain the next time you see one to explain to you what disimpaction um, means okay or you can look it up in the dictionary fecal impaction Again, buildup of tri hardened fe uh, feces and so on. Hemorrhoids. So, hemorrhoids are in large uh, veins that kind of come out of the rectum every now and then, uh, causes itching, burning. It's very painful and bleeds. So, if you're trying to wipe a resident's um, rectal area after they've had a bowel movement, be, care, be very careful because if they have hemorrhoids and you wipe them hard they will bleed and it's very painful different types of enema we mentioned earlier but the frequently used enema is the saline enema and we said that resident must be in sims position to receive enema an enema should be stopped immediately if the resident complains of pain or if you feel a resistance and this must be reported to the charge nurse. So about more guidelines about enema, provide plenty of privacy, place resident in the same position. We've talked about that. You know, always, you know, go in slowly uh, as you squeeze the container into uh, the rectum. Um, also be sure to ask your instructor to show you what an enema looks like. We have one. Um, in the school okay oh uh, one more thing I said I did say earlier that enemas are allowed to be given by the CNAs in some facilities but in most facilities the charge nurses give enema specimen so every now and then there will be a doctor's order to collect a sample of either a urine uh, stool blood sputum tissue or whatever so if it has to do with urine or stool or sputum then the cna is going to be involved in collecting it if it's blood draw then the nurses will draw the blood um, so if it's a stool specimen you just have to let the resident know oh the, uh, the nurse need uh, a specimen of your stool so the next time you have a bowel movement don't flush the toilet um, you know, until uh, so that I can so that the nursing assistant can scoop a piece of the feces into a cup and uh, you know let the charge nurse know so that the charge nurse can bring this the real specimen cup that is properly labeled with resident's name on it, date of birth, room number, and then you put the stool in there. But the, the charge nurse will put this the sample in there and then you know. Save, in, save it in the specimen refrigerator so that the lab people can come and collect it. Okay, so um, points about stool specimens. Stool is tested for blood or pathogens or other things such as um, parasites. Um, stool must be uh, warm if being tested and so on. Well, that's just lab. Um, Collecting a spoop is specimen, I just spoke about that. Uh, occult means hidden, like a hidden blood. Um, sometimes there might be blood in the stool and, it, you, and you cannot see it. So that's called occult blood. Ostomy is a surgical opening into the body. Um, that's just ostomy mean. The stoma means the same thing, like an artificial opening in the body. Colostomy. So, a colostomy is a surgically uh, created opening through the 
abdominal wall into the large intestine to allow feces to be expelled. Um, this particular point here, you might want to write down um, as a question to ask one of your instructors to explain it further. Um, we have colostomy bags that we can show you so that you can have a better understanding of what a colostomy uh, is and how to take care of a colostomy. Um, so again, um, to talk more about this, when um, I think there's a picture on the next slide and I can show you and explain better. So right here, see that um, opening on the stomach that the nurse, I guess, is cleaning. So what happened is that either um, a, can a colon cancer or a gunshot wound that pierced the large intestine that cut off um, the, the, the large intestine which does not allow feces to go through and get to the anus so it can come out. So what will happen is the there will be a surgical procedure done whereby the stomach will be opened and linked to the last good portion of the large intestine so that feces now come out of the stomach into I mean instead of the normal way which is to come out of the rectum of, of the anus then there will be a colostomy bag placed over that opening so that when um, the resident um, have a bowel movement it comes out of that stomach and goes into the bag and, and again be sure to ask your one of your instructors to show you what a colostomy bag looks like so caring for the cost colostomy just soap and water um, when you're changing the bag um, make sure you have a new bag ready um, you have your gloves on you get a separate trash can um, take off the old uh, uh, colostomy bag then you're gonna wipe the area be very careful because they normally feel sore and then immediately you know wrap the used um, colostomy bag put it in the um, trash bag and tie it and then place the new colostomy bag onto the stomach and seal it um, it has like a sticker that will stick around that hole okay again so let me emphasize this point here guidelines for assisting a resident um, um, sorry with uh, let's go back one or two slides I want to talk about when you're taking care of somebody with colostomy there's a there's a big dignity issue with colostomy just imagine that you know this person used to be normal like everybody else and and have bowel movements and feces coming out of the rectum but because of this illness or whatever happened the feces now have to come out of the stomach into a bag so that room doesn't smell good when they pass gas it comes into the bag they have stool it comes into the bag so when you go to change this bag when you unseal it to change it it smells like toilets I mean like um, pit toilets not regular toilets because regular toilet once you do your business and flush it the odor kind of dies away but in a pit toilet the smell continues you know comes out and, um, so don't make the resident feel uncomfortable or feel um, like you know they're dirty or smelling so kind of be considerate when you're pro providing care for a colostomy uh, patient, a uh, resident. Bowel retraining. Bowel retraining means that um, somebody have to
be trained again. It doesn't have to be re trained again to learn how to use the bathroom and not be incontinent. So, for example, it could be that the resident had a stroke and was kind of paralyzed. Um, they went through therapy for months and now they're beginning to get better again, uh, back, almost back to where they used to be. So, during that period, they were incontinent. They couldn't control their bladder or their bowel. But now, they're beginning to gain strength and they can they're back there now in a, a bowel retraining program so then the uh, nursing assistants have a role to play there encourage them and uh, keep encouraging them to keep uh, keep up with the bowel retraining make sure they have enough to eat and drink so that the retraining program can work well again keeping a positive attitude when residents struggle with bowel retraining can make a huge difference so you encourage them. Some days they might have a setback. You know, you encourage them, you know, not to worry. They should keep trying. Okay. All right. So maintain privacy. Again, encourage them to eat well. Provide perineal care when it's, when it's necessary. Again, how would it feel if you were unable to control your elimination? Think about that. As we provide care for others, it's important that we think about how we would feel if we were in that position. Well, thank you. That's the end of the lecture.